All right, guys, I'm uh, far enough along. I thought I'd do another update for you, call it part two of this build. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but right in there is a water strider. This this uh, tub has been here with water in it for three days. Once I got it leveled and positioned where I wanted, I, I uh, filled it with a, you know half a tank of water. Uh, he's right there by the back swimming around. To check that bulkhead before I had to you know dig it up if uh, if it had a leak and uh, just to you know get it stable and and so that as I was filling it and doing everything around it it didn't move on me. I put a lot of work into leveling it. I didn't want to unlevel it. Anyway, so I, I put that water in there about three days ago. There's actually two water striders in there now, and they look like they are trying to make more water striders, if you get my drift. Um, why am I pointing that out? That's how quick aquatic systems attract life. This is why I'm so big into aquatic systems. I don't care if it's aquaponics, aquatics, you know, aquaculture. When you bring water onto a property, uh, I've seen the increase in life on my property. Just my the, the original ones I did over there, you know, little uh, 300 gallon tanks uh, in the ground, and there's bullfrogs living in those tanks at this point. There's tree frogs living in the higher tanks. Um, that's how quick this works, and that's why I like it. Anyway, so where are we at? Uh, one thing I had to do is I had to get my chainsaw out and do a little plunge cutting here and make that hole bigger. I wasn't really thinking, I guess, uh, when I had the easy time to make that hole, which is when I was putting it together. And, uh, you know, we're in a situation where I need to be able to get, yes, the return line back through there, but I also need the, the supply line out. So that's a one and a quarter supply line, two inch return line. So uh, that'll fit now. And that'll all actually be hidden because this is going to get some soil brought in and bring that level up around here. That'll help lower the relative height of the system even more uh, for working on beds and stuff like that. And this area just could use with some improvement of the soil around it to landscape the whole thing and make it look nice once it's over. That's the theme on this one. Let's make it look pretty. I've had a lot of people ask how to get my wife on board and make it look pretty. Uh, when I'm done with this, basically what you're gonna have is a water garden, a, a beautiful water feature in the landscape that produces food and flowers and medicine. That's that's what we're gonna end up with here. So I started filling in the uh, topsoil. I got a yard of topsoil yesterday. I went on a Saturday. The place I go, I get this topsoil. It's pretty good stuff. Screen soil for uh, $11 a, a yard. It's like 16 for everybody else. I get a discount as prior service military. They're nice enough to do that for those of us who have served. And uh, I really wanted two yards. I'm gonna need two. I probably unloaded two thirds of the load. As you can see, I'm well away from you know getting it full. I didn't really trust the guy that was doing the loading yesterday. I know the guys that do loading of materials up there, and some of them are really good. Most of the guys during the week, you know, you get a load and they have that bobcat bucket and they like slowly sift that in there. The dude that they had working yesterday, I, I don't think he's very skilled and he just kind of dumps it. And uh, I don't trust somebody doing that with two yards into the back of my truck, even though it is an F-350. Um, another modification I did to my original plan, I took these scrap cuttings and I built this service box. And I'm going to get some of that uh, foam insulation, spray insulation, and spray these gaps so that it keeps the dirt out. And that'll let me service everything. And again, I'll have a one and a quarter inch delivery line and a two inch supply line coming through here with valves where we can shut them off for service, valves where we can drain them. And uh, this should give pretty good frost protection. We could always throw a blanket in there. We could throw a light bulb in there with a thermocube. You name it. But uh, we should have no frost problems with this system in our climate at all. And uh, kind of worked out how we're going to do the piping for the initial design. Keep everything as balanced as possible on two legs. That's how you have the best luck with a system with a pump. So we'll come out and we'll split the difference right here and go on a T and go that way and that way. And we're going to install those 4x4 four four beds about 4 feet away from, the, from lip to lip. So there's plenty of room to walk between there and work on those. Uh, with either fronts matching or being a little bit in front of. That'll eliminate me having to worry about, there's actually an irrigation line that runs right through here. It was in the way, we had to move it a little bit. It gave us a great opportunity though, when I dug it up, uh, I put a T in right here, and that's just capped right now, but that'll be a hose bit back there, which will be supply from the well for this system. We'll probably even plumb in a float valve, so we never have to worry about topping this system up since I don't have chlorine on my water here, I'm on a well. That's something we can do, and it's really easy to do now. We've got you know everything right where we want it. Uh, we'll also, when I run that line, I'll run you know the two inch and the one and a quarter side by side, one trench, why dig two, uh, and we'll cap them on a T going this way so that we can expand the system later. Let that sit in the ground. We'll know where that is. It'll be easy enough to find, and then you know your other side will go up and into your your wicking beds for return. 
Uh, that'll give us a balanced system. And we'll go ahead and put a piece of uh, conduit in and we'll run it basically in the same trench with just one delivery trench out. That'll bring power from the workshop over there to here. Everything will be in the ground buttoned down nice. Again, the theme on this one is I want one that if you have the reluctant spouse, she'll be like, oh, I'd be okay with that. It's going to be a lot more work this way. And frankly, it costs a lot more money to make it look pretty. I could have this thing up and running right now. I could be done with it if I didn't care how it looked. Uh, all the work in this is not in really in the plumbing. It's, I mean, you know, this is in, you know, doing the carpentry and, and, and the integrated plumbing, the buried plumbing, all of that stuff. So anyway, uh, that's where we're at now. It should uh, be a really nice build to follow along with. I'm glad I'm capturing it as we go because I think that uh, when this thing's done, there's going to be a lot of questions about it that it'll be hard to explain without being able to show it all opened up. And uh, with that, we'll catch you uh, in the future, probably a couple, three days from now, we'll have part three.